Praise the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. Then verse 12 says, Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. <laughs> verse 13, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place for which I sent you into exile. Mm. Life is very complicated. And uh, <laughs> Jody knows what I'm talking about. And it's kind of funny how when you think your life is going in a certain direction and it's good, then you get to a crossroads. And then you're faced with a decision that you don't know which way to go because both ways look like an answered prayer, mm -hmm. which is a little harder to make a decision on compared to this is something good, this is something bad, and well, you know what you're going to choose. And I think the Lord wanted me to know this, that if I seek him with all my, with all my heart, I'm going to find him. Amen. I pray that he gives me the wisdom and the discernment to be able to recognize which way I'm supposed to go. And that's my prayer for you, too. When you come to a point in your life that you're faced with a similar situation, that he gives you the wisdom and the discernment for you to know which direction you should go. It's really hard to trust him, but I'm going to do that because I know that he's going to show me and point in the direction that I'm supposed to go. I've talked to my mother about this, and I said, I know that if I start going in one direction and I'm supposed to go the other way, the Holy Spirit is going to smack me in the head mm -hmm. so that I know that I have to go the other way. So at least I'm comforted in the <coughs> fact that if I'm not going where I'm supposed to, at least when I, when I feel smack in the back of my head, I know that, okay, i got to pay attention. i got to go back and go the other way. And that's, those are the sort of things that we face, you know, as Christians and and that's one thing that I, I feel people fail to understand that when we give our lives to the Lord, they think that it's all nice and dandy, which it is. But we're actually attacked more than before because we are pursuing something so good and so wonderful <clears throat> that all of these other forces in the spiritual realm are trying to get us to get down from that horse that we're in to steer us back into our own way. So we just got to stand strong and know that no matter how hard life is and how difficult it gets, God is always with us and he's always going to protect us. So the things that he has planned for us is just going to come to pass as long as we look for him. Amen. Amen. So Amen. That's my little word Amen. for tonight. Amen. Much obliged. <clears throat> Prayer request or to Eric Hill? Um, I just have to give uh, Chris Carter that during my time on the Lord, I was in the greatest pain that I ever felt in my life. He got in some very hard times in my life, and I, my mentor um, at the time showed the best relationship with my mentor that I was at, and he told me that there was going to be times that my will would get second, and his thoughts would come to me, and his fears, and his fears. And I just had to trust in the Lord.
Father, we thank you tonight for bringing us together in your name, Lord. We thank you, Father, because we know that you direct our steps. You guide us, Lord, down the path that you have laid out in front of us, a path that we are to walk, Lord, so that your will is done in our lives. For the blessing that we are to also share with those around us.
Y'all ready to worship the Lord? I want to introduce you to Erica, Yay. our new second soprano. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yay. Hallelujah. She may be first alto. We're not, we'll, we'll find out exactly yeah. where. Figure it out. That's yep. easy. I promise that's, I'll, I'll start studying. <laughs> that's, the easy, that's the easy part. Hallelujah. So. That's one answer to prayer. We got one more, one more to go. I hear another, another lady's voice. Hallelujah! In the meantime, let's dance for His glory. <laughs> <laughs> 
We will dance, we will dance for your glory. We will dance, we will dance for your glory. We will dance for your glory, Lord. We will lift up a shout, we will adore you. Every sound that we make, it is for you. We will dance for your glory, Lord. Tell me, Roberto, for salvation in this place. For Roberto. Let your name be lifted There we go. Come on. Let the faithful hearts of God. Jesus. Jesus. Lift up your hand, you ancient gates. We lift it on you, ancient God. The King is coming in. The King is coming in. The King is coming in. We lift up the shout to shake us. Here we go. We're the people of God with a song to sing. And we're living our lives as an offering. We will dance for your glory, Lord. Keep going down. Because the close to the heart that we love on high. As we tell the world that we love and life. We will dance go up. for your glory, Lord. Lift up your heads. Your head, you ancient gates. Be lifted high, you ancient God. The King is coming in. The King is coming in. We lift up a shout to shake the sky. Lift up a high, be glorified. The King is coming in. The King is coming in.
ja ja jazz chord. Hallelujah. Woo. For you, some of you from the 60s, we're doing a Mitch Miller thing. We just need a little bouncing ball thing going on. So. Oh, how beautiful are you, Lord? It's your world. It's your love. Oh, how glorious. Sing it out, ladies. Just a moment there, set me free. Here we go. I give you glory, glory. I give you glory, glory. I give you glory, glory. Beautiful. Come on, ladies.
church. You may be seated.
anybody had stayed here, you could have heard quite a conversation as we went home, but that's your loss. I forgot I had left it in my uh, Is it working? I got to take it off until I got home and then I took my sweater off and I realized I was still miked. <laughs> and Sally wasn't listening no matter how loud I turned it up, so I just decided to take it off. And it work. Anyway, praise God. Appreciate everybody being here. Thank you so much for coming out. And the weather's a little bit nicer than it had been, so we'll deal with it. I was thinking uh, when Roberto was talking and some of the other testimonies that and uh, this really isn't my message, but I just, I, I just feel like I need to say something about it. But in Daniel chapter 2, uh, go to verse 31, Roberto. I think it's uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 31. start there, but I'll go back to verse 28 just for for some of the conversation that went on here prior to uh, worship. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king. How many of you know your kings Amen. and priests? Praise the Lord. But there's a God in heaven that reveals secrets and makes known to the king what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed. Now that's like uh, Jody was talking about getting woke up and feeling impressed to pray for somebody. Don't ever just say I'm having a rough night sleeping, but I mean, take advantage of it. It, it is the Holy Spirit. I, I've had those kind of things happen. I, su I suspect all of us have at times, and uh, a lot of times we don't know who it is. He doesn't tell us, but I, every one of us, and again to what Jody was saying about speaking out and declaring and, and stepping out boldly, to do whatever God tells you to do. Tim was talking about the very same thing. We, we have to realize Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. We have that spirit. Everybody here has the capability to prophesy. In fact, Paul said, I would that you all prophesy. So we should all be prophesying. Amen. We should all be willing to step out and take what God tells us. It's kind of like, I don't know if you've ever done if you've ever been involved with like tongues and interpretations, you can get private interpretations for your own tongue when you're praying, but there's also the gift of interpretation that comes with tongues. Well, uh, I remember a few times when I've, when I've operated in that, rarely do you get the whole message. You just get the unction and maybe a word or two to, to say, and then it just kind of goes as you speak. As you're willing to step out and say it, God begins to channel that through you. And it's true, not just in a setting where we're in church or where you, you know, I mean, it's the same Holy Spirit. So when you're having conversations with people or God is moving on you, the Spirit of God is moving on you to, to speak or to interact with somebody, be sensitive. Because God's got something he wants to say in that situation. And don't, don't count yourself out. I mean, don't think of yourself as... as you know, not usable. God wants to use you. Amen. That's why he filled you with his spirit, not only to save you, but so that you can be a witness. Amen. For him. So let me, let me just show you, we're talking about, uh, really what I want to talk about tonight is the argument about once saved, always saved, or, you know, anybody ever been down that road or felt like you were saved and then you weren't saved because something you did. Hey, the world is there's a lot of people that you're going to come into contact that had a Christian background that went that had a grandmother that prayed for them, maybe their mom, and they took them to church, or they went to Bible school as a kid, and they accepted the Lord, and then they just kind of spaced everything out. Now, if they trusted in the Lord for their salvation, even as a child, they are saved, regardless of what happens. They just need a wake-up call. They just need to realize that God is still there for them, that God hasn't turned his back on them, and sometimes that happens to us. 
you go through a part of your life where you just go crazy. I mean, it doesn't happen to everybody, but it does happen to people. I was raised in not a, in a quote unquote Christian home where we, we didn't always pray and all those things. My mother prayed when we were kids, she'd pray for us. She sent us to Sunday school, sent us to Bible school and stuff when we were little kids. Once we got old enough to work, we were all working. So we didn't, you know, it was like Toby and, and their family. You worked when nobody else would work. That was the deal. When holidays came, when weekends came and everybody else was off, you had to work. Somebody had to go and you were the ones that were available, praise the Lord. So, but it's just, it's the way it is. But it was years later that I came to a saving knowledge of God. Not that I hadn't probably been saved as a child, because I can remember, you know, praying prayers and, and so forth. But my life didn't reflect any of that. My life went in a totally different direction with the whole story that I won't get into tonight. But, but nevertheless, let me, let me take you, let me, let me show you some things here. Let's move on up to verse 31, Roberto, and we'll read through uh, uh, 44. Thou, O king, sawest and behold a great image. Now, this is Daniel interpreting a dream that he hasn't heard. He's giving him the interpretation without even knowing what the dream is. But thou, O king, sawest and behold a great image, a great image whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image, his head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like chaff in the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Go ahead. Keep going. Thou, O king, art a king of kings for the God of heaven that hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, the fowls of the heaven, hath he given unto thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces, and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with the miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of the iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. Praise the Lord. So most of you have all heard this many, many times and heard all the messages preached about it. But I'm merely not interested in doing all that as much as I am just showing you how faithful God is and how accurate his word is. And this is a, a perfect example of that because Babylon is the country or the nation that uh, Nebuchadnezzar ruled. And this is who Daniel was speaking to. He was the head of gold or that nation was the head of gold. Okay. The following nation, Medo-Persia, was the chest and arms of silver. After that comes the Greeks, which was the the belly and the thighs, that was brass. After that comes Rome, the, the, the legs of iron, amen? And so following that is this divided kingdom, which is Europe. Because if you know anything much about history, if you remember any of your history, and even in high school, I think, is where I, I think that's where I learned this. But anyhow, uh, when Rome uh, was destroyed or, or fell, it fell not, it, it we say it always fell from within, which it did. It had degraded. But there were the Goths, the Visigoths, the, all these other nations, the Franks, all of these that now are Europe. But these were just, uh, you know, clans. They were just groups of, uh, uh, of uh, basically non-Christian, non-Roman uh, uh, peoples that lived all over Europe at the time. And so what we find out is as time goes on, it says that they, they, had, they 
these kingdoms that are divided were part clay and part brass. But they couldn't meld together because you know you can't take clay and mix it with iron and make it stay. It just won't stay together. Well, it says that they, what's interesting is they talk about they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. And if you look at European history, as they develop into different countries, France and Germany and England, these are all related. The, the royalty in these families are all related. And they try to marry within one of the King George of England. I think there's two or three others in England that tried to marry into the Russian monarchy, into the uh, German uh, monarchy, because they were related. They were like cousins and second cousins and so forth. And they tried to marry, tried to mingle their seed to make them one nation again so that they could rule the way Rome had, the way Medo-Persia had, the way Greece had, the way uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had done in, in Babylon. But it's never happened. They, they couldn't stay together long enough to, to keep out of a war. I mean, they, you look at the, the history of Europe, and these people are all related, but they're killing each other all the time. Right. So they tried to mingle the seed, but it wouldn't stick. Right. It, it wouldn't bind. And so comes a rock. Now, that's all true. That is history. Just pick up a history book, and you'll read every bit of this, world history or European history, and you'll see all of this comes to pass. Now, this was written thousands of years before even Rome was ex in existence, and yet all of that stuff actually happened just the way God said it was going to happen through the prophet. So expect that this stone, which is Jesus, the rock, he's going to come, and he's going to take care of all of these warring kingdoms all over the earth, wherever they are. And he is going to fill the earth. His kingdom is going to rule and reign forever. we got something to look forward to. Jesus is coming, and he is going to set up a kingdom, and he is going to rule and reign for eternity. Praise the Lord. But that is a fact. These are historic facts. I mean, to me, it's amazing. I mean, I, can't, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow for sure. But God knew, and this prophet knew, thousands of years in advance. And it came to pass exactly the way God said that it would. We need to have confidence. This word is forever settled. I mean, it is settled. Yes. Praise the Lord. You don't have to be fearful. You don't have to be anxious about anything. God has got our future well taken care of. Praise the Lord. We are fixed in Christ. Amen. And so I look at these things and I think, you know, why do we fret about anything? We ought to be the Alfred E. Newmans, you know, of the world. What? Me worry? Praise the Lord. I mean, God's got the answer. He's got it all taken care of. For every situation for believers, amen, there is nothing but good news. Praise the Lord. Now, let's go and I'll, we'll move on into this. But I'm just I'm saying this because I want you to believe what the Word says. Hallelujah. Because that's what changes things. And when you open your mouth in agreement with this Word, you are prophesying. And you're going to come into contact with people. If it hasn't happened to you personally, it will happen to you as you meet with other people, as you interact with other people who have had a spiritual experience, thought they were saved, wanted to be saved, trusted in God, or cried out to God, hey, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah, amen. But they have, because their life is so, like most of us, so transitory, so you know, changing up and down, in and out, relationships, everything changes all the time, amen, and then they drift off into, because there's no consistency in the word, and no confidence in the word, then they drift away from that, amen, and believe that God doesn't want anything to do with them. You're going to find there's a lot of people out there, not all, but there's a lot of people out there who have had an encounter with Christ, but given up because their life went so wrong, amen, it just got so bad praise the Lord, that they feel like because society has rejected them, friends have rejected, in many cases family have rejected them, that God certainly must have rejected me. But I'm telling you, he hasn't. Not you or not any of the people who have ever been believers. They need, they just need to be prophesied to. They need to be spoken to, amen, by the word of God. They need to know what God really says about them. Now I'm telling you, as this church continues to to grow as, as God continues to move and, and 
speak into other people's lives to come and be a part of this. We're going to have messes. Revivals are not as pretty as we'd like to think that they are. They're usually pretty screwed up because you got all kinds of screwed up people, yeah. and including us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. And we got to be able to work with them. We've got to be able to talk with them. We've got to be able to encourage them. We have to be able to point them to Jesus. Amen. We've got to be able to identify with them. Yeah. Praise the Lord. It doesn't mean you've got to have done everything they've done. But listen, it doesn't really matter what we've done. If we've drifted away, if we've believed things other than the truth, then we're all kind of had the same experiences on one to one degree or another. Amen. So let's go to this. John chapter 10, uh, verse 27 through 29. Because I really think, you know, this we, we need to we need to understand this purpose that God has developed in each one of us. We, I hear it in every service, in every testimony, talking about how, you know, we're interacting with other people. It's, a lot of times they're not pleasant people. I mean, come on, if you don't have the Lord, you got plenty to be unpleasant about. I mean, this world is not a happy place just in and of itself. So you can understand why people are bitter, why they're hurt, why they react from those feelings. So that we have to have a word, amen, that is a word from God. Not just a pat on the back and say, well, you know, we're, we'll feel sorry for you. No, something that will encourage them, something that will cause them to believe God so that God can work in their life. He operates by faith. Praise God. So my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You are sheep. Praise the Lord. You do hear his voice because he said you do. Yes. You may not always recognize it, but you hear it. It's there. He's speaking to you. It's not necessarily an audible voice. Probably, most likely, it won't be an audible voice. But it's a still small voice. It's an unction. It's a thought. It can, it can be inspired by anything. Amen. I can't tell you how many times I watch TV. I, I got a message Sunday that I got from a commercial. Because <laughs> I see more commercials than anything else. Not a whole message, but I mean, just the thought comes to you from what we see and what we experience, right? Well, God's speaking to you all the time. He's, he's trying to give you, amen, the words, the prophetic words that can not only change your life, but can change the lives of people that you interact with, that you come into contact with. Amen? So my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. That ought to be embedded in our thinking. Amen? Nobody, nothing, no one can take you out of the Father's hand. Praise the Lord. Now, if the life that we live, that we have with God, if that can end, can you really call it eternal? No. Now, let me say, I don't want to be morose or anything here, but as you get older, uh, death becomes more real. When I was a young man, when I was in my teens, late teens and early 20s, when I was in the Marine Corps, I was in Vietnam, I, I, was, I didn't really think I was going to have to worry, not until much time had passed over there before I really thought something might happen to me. I just assumed it was all going to happen to somebody else. Because <laughs> I saw it happen to other people, but I just didn't believe it would happen to me. Why? Because I was 19, 20 years old. You're invincible at that age. That's why that's who goes in the military. They, none of them think they're going to die. They always think the other guy's going to die. Amen. But I'm just saying that you do reckless things when you're young because you're not thinking about the future. Praise the Lord. But the older you get, the more friends, family, others pass away and so on and so forth. And so it becomes a more of a reality to you that at some point you're going to be there. You're going to be in that number unless the Lord comes first, which I hope he does. But on the other hand, uh, those, if, if, you, if you let those kinds of thoughts, and it could be anything, anything negative, it can be overwhelming. It can be depressing 
it can stifle what life God wants to live through you. Amen? So I don't want to I don't want to make it sound like I'm sitting around all the time thinking about, okay, when am I dying? I'm not. I'm just saying, you know, at 67, you know you're closer than you were at 27 unless something unusual happens, right? Praise the Lord. So I'm just saying, this we have to be able to have confidence and faith in God. You don't really need a lot of confidence for eternal life when you're 20. Okay, well, I didn't. Because eternal life to me was like 60. You know what I mean? You're, when you're 18, 19, hey, if I make it to 40, that'll be plenty. I mean, that's what I thought. 40, 45, that'll be good enough. I mean, who wants to live past that anyhow? Until you're 45, yeah. praise the Lord. And then all of a sudden, that's just a young buck, and you just, hallelujah, you've got to go. And 65 now all of a sudden is the new 40. Well, it's actually the new 64. It's a little bit better. Anyway, let me give you a simple definition of eternal security. God himself bears all of the burden to keep you saved forever. Hallelujah. Not you, God. That is the epitome or the, the, the truth of eternal security. Your salvation is all of God. Amen. It's from him, it's by him, and it's even for him. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. You are secure in your forgiveness. You're secure in your justification. Secure in your adoption. Secure in your everlasting life. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. If you, I, we talk about these things all the time, but if you get to where you really believe this, can you see how it would change a life? I mean, would, would, would the, the, the fear, anxieties, stress, they go away. They go away if you really believe this. This is the abundant life that God wants us to have. He wants us to enjoy this life, to live this night, life, not to live it in fear of consequences, amen, or, or fear of death. He took away the fear of death. The sting of death has lost its sting. Yes. Praise the Lord. Why? Because we're not going to die. Yes. If you're born again, you've done all the real dying you're ever going to do. Yes. Praise God. Now, I know that all Christians don't agree with this, but when I read the Bible, I, I see that the evidence for this is, is just it's woven throughout every doctrine of salvation that there is. Right. Praise the Lord. It's there to let us know, don't be afraid, fear not. Things are good between us and God. Yeah. Now, I'm going to give you tonight, I'm going to give you nine reasons real quick here why you can't lose your salvation. Praise the Lord. And it's based on four attributes of God. His grace, his power, his faithfulness, and his sovereignty. Yes. Now, I was, I was saved in a church who, uh, I remember, I've, I've told this before, but I remember one time our pastor was, he said, how many of you here know that if you died today, you're going to heaven? Now, this is a very rigid, holiness, Pentecostal church. I'd only been saved maybe, I don't know when he said that, maybe a year or less, I don't know. And I looked around, and out of the 500 or some people that were there, there were probably 250 at least that had their hand raised. Now these are people that worked all the time at trying to do everything the way they believed they were supposed to do it. Clothes. Uh, no TVs. No, no, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Calling that holiness separated from the world. And, and really, but, and here they were with all of their works. And God bless them. I have many friends still in the church. I love them. And, but I'm just saying, with all of that, they were still unsure. They were still concerned about their relationship with God. 
praise God. And that is sad. The number one reason why you have eternal security is because all your sins are fully paid for, even the ones you're going to commit tomorrow. Well, me and Jody are going to sin tomorrow. Not together, but we will sin somewhere, wherever we are. And I'm guessing that so will everybody else here. Somehow, some way, if nothing more than a thought. Praise the Lord. Jesus said it's not sin because you killed somebody or you murdered. It's sin if you just hate them. It's the same as murder. Praise the Lord. So that's the law. That's the, that's the demands of the law, right? All right, look at this. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12. All of your sins are fully paid for, even the ones you haven't committed yet. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Yes. All sins forever. Yes. Praise the Lord. Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who walk in the Spirit and not after all right? So there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For those who are in Christ, it's not talking about how perfect your behavior is. It's talking about either being in Christ or not being in Christ. For those who are in Christ, and being in Christ is simply a believer. It's called being in him or in Christ. Praise the Lord. So if you have confess Jesus as your Savior, if you accepted him, if you asked him to come into your life, if you trusted in his salvation and his, his uh, redemptive works, then you're walking in the Spirit. And if you are, there's no condemnation. So whenever you feel condemnation, whenever you feel shame, it's coming from someplace besides God. It isn't coming from God. Don't let the enemy or your own thoughts build up some error, some mistake, or some choice that you made into something that can cause you to feel insecure in your relationship with God, that can cause you to feel shame or fear or whatever. 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. You may say, well, this is so fundamental, so basic. Well, believe me, it may seem fundamental, it may seem basic, but the enemy uses this junk all the time against all of us. Praise the Lord. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. He's saying, you know, don't sin. But I know you're going to sin. So when you sin, recognize you have an intermediary. You have an advocate. You have someone to step in on your behalf and declare you innocent. Yes. That's Jesus. That's what Jesus does. He's forever making intercession for those who are saved, who are believers. Praise God. Amen. Payment for your sin was completely accomplished. <coughs> so there is no circumstance where you are ever going to pay for one of them. Never. No circumstance by which you would ever be accountable for a sin. Because he has paid all of it. He has paid for all of it. Yes. You say, well, that sounds like a, uh, that sounds like a ripoff to God. No, he knew what he was doing. Amen. Our job is simply to accept it and believe it. And enjoy it. Hallelujah. Live your life through that reality. Praise the Lord. Okay, number two reason. Because your good works weren't required to get you saved. They can't be required to keep you saved. Huh. Praise the Lord. That, uh, basically, there's two big reasons why God might kick you out of his family. Too much sin or too little righteousness. And I just addressed the first, the sin issue, right? He's taken care of all the sin. He's dealt with all the sin. Amen. No guilt, no shame, no condemnation. Sin's been dealt with. Praise the Lord. And here's the answer to the second. Good works, including 
religious observances, morality. You can go to the book and it tell you it's not about what day you keep it. It's not this. It's not that. Jesus is our Sabbath. Yes. We, we've chosen Sunday. That was the day that he was resurrected, so that's the day. But it doesn't matter. He is our salvation. He is our Sabbath. He is Lord of the Sabbath. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Besides that, he told us the Sabbath was made for man. Man wasn't made for the Sabbath. Praise the Lord. So, good works, including religious observances, uh, morality, all of your effort is excluded from the way of salvation. You say, that can't be. But it is. Come on. Now, it may not be as big a deal to us because right now we may not be really immoral people Come on. like we once were. Right? But the people you're going to interact with are, they're immoral. And some of our attitudes and some of our behavior can be immoral too. It may not be as, you know, the dirty, down, nasty kind of immorality, but it's immoral, it's immoral. Praise the Lord. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Praise the Lord. All right, number three, because it, as a Christian, you've been made a full partner in everything that belongs to Jesus. Amen. For God to unsave you, he would have to first let go of Christ. He'd have to deny him. Right. Your oneness in Christ is the ultimate guarantee of your eternal salvation. Because for you to be lost, Jesus would have to be lost. Right. And how many of you know God cannot deny himself? That's right. And Christ is God yes. in the flesh. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 17. This is a football. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. We're back to basics what we're talking about. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. Now, I'm not doing this tonight because of anybody that's here, but I'm saying over time, these messages have to be taught because people will come who don't know what you know who are not where you are, who have not had the background that you have. And we can't just, you can't just leap over them and go on to something else. You know, it's like Jesus, or, or and even Paul was talking about, he said, you know, there's things I'd like to say, but right now, you can't handle it. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm not talking about you, but there are people that will come that if we were just to go down the path that we're on, they're going to be sitting out there thinking, what in the world are they talking about? How can this be? How can this message of grace be a reality? Because everything I've ever been taught was what I got to do. What is demanded of me? You can't just jump past that and expect people to be able to embrace the truth, to, to accept that gospel. Amen. So if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Praise God. Verse uh, Chapter 4, verse 7. Galatians still. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. If a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Amen. Praise God. For God to unsave you, first he'd have to divide you from Jesus. He'd have to separate you from Christ. And we already read that it can't be done. Praise God. Yes. Number four, because your security is in God's hands, 
not your hands. Amen. John 10, verses 27 through 29. I'm glad God's got my security. I'm glad that it's not up to me to maintain this. Praise the Lord. My sheep hear my voice. I know that they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number five, because salvation depends on God's ability, not yours. Praise, Praise the Lord. The Lord told me uh, years ago, I'll, he said, uh, when I took, back when I took this church, because there was nobody, there was hardly anybody, and, and I quit a job that paid good money for no money, basically, basically. Oh, God bless the people who were here. They did tithe. They did help. But, I mean, come on. At the time, we were paying rent and utilities and everything else, and that little place we had over there on the south side, the utilities were more than the rent because it was like living in a screened-in porch, basically. I mean, the wind just blew through. But nevertheless, God said, I'll be your shield and exceeding great reward. That comes from, I didn't realize it. I mean, I guess I would read it probably sometime. But it goes back to when Abraham had taken the spoils from uh, the kings who had taken his family and lot and so on and so forth captive. And he went back out and defeated him. And then he wouldn't take any of the spoils. He gave it to Melchizedek, he paid tithes to Melchizedek, and he said, whoever wants this stuff, it's yours. I don't want a penny. I don't want a shoelace out of this stuff. I'm going to trust God. And because of that, that's why God said, I'll be your shield and exceeding great reward. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord told me that he'd be my shield. Praise the Lord. Another place in the Bible, he's our strong tower. Yes. Amen. The righteous run in yes. and are saved. Praise God. So it's God's ability, not my ability. If God is your strong tower, name me somebody. Name me some power that's able to break through and drag you out of your saved position. Amen? Amen. Is there something stronger, more powerful than God? I don't believe. Praise the Lord. Jude 124. God is, we say God is good. I say it a lot, but I'm telling you, I, I can't even fathom the goodness of God. I mean, this is amazing to me. He does it all. He does everything. He's our security. And you can't be any more secure than in the hands of God. Praise God. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy. I can't wait to be standing before the Lord faultless. <laughs> I mean, I may have to check those. Because, you know, it's just so hard to see yourself faultless. Because we know all of our faults. I mumble around a lot of times when I'm, when I'm frustrated or angry or something. I don't usually don't say anything to Sally because that's not a good idea. But I do mumble. I'm not so she can hear me, but to myself. I, I, I'm like an old fool. I don't say it because I know it's stupid and I shouldn't say it. You know? But I feel it. I think it. And I say it. Just not out loud. But God hears it all and still declares me faultless. Praise the Lord. And I'm always glad five minutes later that I didn't say it. Because I didn't really mean it. I just felt it. Praise the Lord. But God said he can, we will be presented to him faultless. Hallelujah. Ooh, I love that. Hallelujah. He is able. That word able, it's cool. That word is dunamio. Uh, Same word for dunamis. It's, it's the word for power. So God has power to do what? 
to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless. That's his power. That's what his power does for us. Praise God. To keep me from failing, from falling, and to be presented faultless before him. Now, you might fall. You might fail. You might fall thousands of times. But God can't fail. God can't fall. Praise the Lord. So he's able to present you faultless because it's his righteousness that has been declared yours. Yes. Praise the Lord. 2 Timothy 4.18. Now, I'm, I, I narrowed this down to just one or two scriptures for each of these, but there, there are, there's, a, there's plenty of them. I could have done more, but I didn't want to take all your time reading the scriptures. So. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. That is you he's talking to. Praise the Lord. The Lord will deliver you from every evil work, yes. yours and anybody else's. Yes. Amen. And will preserve you in, unto his heavenly kingdom. He'll preserve you till the, you're in the kingdom. Yes. Praise the Lord. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Number six. Because God promised to save you to the end, and he can't lie. Right. Praise God. Yes. Philippians 1 and 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I believe I ought to give a hand clap for that. Hallelujah. Amen. God would have to be unfaithful to himself to take back your salvation. God would have to lie. And that's one of the things that's impossible for God to do. Right. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 1 and 9. Let me tell you something about prophecy. That's what I'm doing here. This is, this is prophecy, by the way. Right. And what does the scripture say? Prophesy. And when you prophesy, it is for one reason, or it is for these reasons, to edify, yes. to build up, yes. and to encourage, yes. to be a blessing. Right. Now, if you understand the word of God, you, can't, you cannot preach it or share it without prophesying. Right. And if you know what it's talking about, you can't do it without edifying. You should leave here feeling better yes. than when you came, not the opposite. Right. Yeah. Right. You should leave here with a better revelation of God. That's called repentance. Yes. Every time we come to church, we repent. Why? Because our minds are being changed yes. about this great, glorious God yes. who's done everything for us. Yes. Come on. God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is faithful. Yes. Praise God. Hebrews 6.18. <clears throat> we ought to sleep like babies. Even on the lousy mattress I got. That I can't take back, by the way. Because Sally took the tag off of it. <laughs> She said she, that's why she left all the tags on the pillows. I was telling Toby and Jody earlier. Well, I don't sleep anyway because the mattress is so lousy, so I just stay awake all night and read the tags on the pillows. <laughs> something to do. <laughs> that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold on the hope that is set before. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Number seven, because God won't take his spirit from you. Right. You are the home of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Praise God. God is with you and God is for you because God is in you. Thank you Lord. Yes. Woo! Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Get the camera, Mike. I'm getting ready. All right. All right. Here we go. He captured me on film. Oh, yeah. Praise.
Praise the Lord, you choreographers everywhere. Okay. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise, hallelujah, of his glory. Praise God, praise God. I like that. I think I'll read it again. In whom ye also trusted. After that, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that, you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Praise the Lord, which is the earnest of our inheritance. It's the down payment. It's the proof that he's coming back for us. Hallelujah. The earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Hallelujah. Wherever, that's why David said, if I make my bed in hell, if I'm up in the highest heavens, if I'm wherever I am, if they burn your body, if you're eaten by fish in the ocean, believe me, it's going to be resurrected. Amen. The atoms, they still exist. Praise the Lord. And God, like a magnet, will suck you right out of wherever you were, and you're going to be. Amen. of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Hallelujah. I don't know how it's going to happen. I just know it's going to happen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Number eight, because your eternal future is already predetermined by God. Praise the Lord. Romans 8, 29 and 30. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Yes. Woo! Hallelujah. Can, uh, move on with this, will you? Can you go on here? I, just whatever next is up there. I can't, I'm trying to think. I, I think this is, uh, if I remember right. Yeah, what should we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Yes. Praise God. We ought, to, we ought to have the greatest expectation, amen, of blessing, of increase, of, of deliverance. Of I just read something the other day. Uh, I, I don't know that I ever read it before, talking about how God saves our children in us. Come on. I, I can't tell you this. I think it's in Kings, but I, can't, I, I have to go back to it. No, I think it's maybe not. Maybe it's in Zechariah. But nevertheless, before... When I was a teenager and accepted Christ, prayed the prayer of faith, my children hadn't been born, but they were still in me. And God said, they are saved in me. Praise the Lord. Now, does that mean they don't have to still have a, you know, a, a relationship with Jesus? No, I mean, they still have to do that, but they will. They will because the Holy Spirit will draw them and move on them because just like Abraham seen, uh -huh. we have that we can have that kind of confidence. You and your house shall be saved. That's what that's what they said when they came to Cornelius. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. It may not look like it. They may not be acting like it. How many of you ever had a kid that didn't act like they were saved and you knew that they knew the Lord? Amen. Ever know anybody that acted really stupid even after they had come to a knowledge of Christ? Doesn't mean they're not saved. Just means they deviated from the path. But that's why the Holy Spirit will draw them back. Why? 
because of a covenant that God made with you before the foundation of the world. Yes. Yes. You were in Christ before the foundation of the world. Now, you didn't know it, but God knew it. Yes. He, didn't, he didn't pick you out and say, I'm going to be really good to Tim, and I, those, get, those people are going to hell. No, he, he just knows. It's not Calvinism. This isn't predestination in the sense that you know, only certain people are going to get saved. No, it's not as well that any should perish. But he knows who will respond. He's known before the foundation of the world. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Be Number nine. Because God has willed your salvation to last until the end. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. Who shall also confirm you unto the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ? Ooh, I like that. Faultless. Blameless. Not because of me, because of him. Hallelujah. He's going to confirm to us right to the end so that we can be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Confirm you to the end. Who's going to confirm you to the end? You? By your strength? Your holiness? Your efforts? Your religion? Your activism? He makes you stable and secure in your salvation. Right to the finish line. We're running a race, but there's no need to get winded. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Spirit is carrying us. It's like this. Remember, you all seen the poster where it says, uh, in fact, I think Erica mentioned this one time. Uh, you know, walking on the beach, and she says, where were you, Lord? Where were you? I only see one set of footprints. Guarantees we'll finish, and we'll finish well. Amen? Grace, hallelujah. When the penetrating eyes of God examine you, he'll find no fault. He'll declare you blameless. Amen. Romans 8, 38 and 39. We're always being judged and measured, and if not by somebody else, by ourselves. Praise the Lord. No need for it. God has already declared you blameless, faultless, perfect in Christ. Hallelujah. Don't worry about Judgment Day. Your Judgment Day happened 2,000 years ago. And all of that wrath that you deserved was poured out on Jesus. And you've been declared righteous. I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. In, gra in grace, <clears throat> God has set all of your works aside, even your good works. Salvation stands forever as his work. Beginning, middle, and end. Praise God. Whatever consequences for sin that there might be for a Christian, separation from God isn't one of them. There's consequences for sin, not from God, but from life. You know what I'm saying? You go out and rob a bank, probably a good chance you'll go to jail. That's not the judgment of God. That's consequences for behavior. Right? right? Hallelujah. You can have confidence that whatever consequences there might be for sin, separation from God is a part of it. It'll never be part of it. Right. Hallelujah. You can't take yourself away from God. The devil can't take you away from God. A pastor, a 
priest, the Pope, can't take you away from God. So what can separate you from God? Absolutely nothing. War! What's a good war? I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, Absolutely nothing can separate you from God. Nothing. Hallelujah. You might feel shaky. You might feel a little insecure. You might feel weak. But tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, 10 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, if we're still here, when the mountains crumble, yep. when the seas dry up, when the sun loses its power to shine, and eternity rolls on forever and evermore, Amen. you'll still find yourself gripped by the grace and the power of who loved you and gave himself for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's a love affair like one that's never been written before. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This is the message the church needs, and it's for sure the message that the lost need. This is the God who gave himself for them and will not, will not them to be lost <clears throat> if they will but confess him, if they will come to him. And how many of you believe that if they were introduced to this God, that they might be more willing to come to him Amen. rather than run from him? Right. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's our obligation. That's our responsibility to let them know how great this God is how loving he is, how gracious he is, how much they mean to him, so much that he gave his life for them. Praise the Lord. That's a good deal, folks. It's a good deal. Give him a hand clap tonight. Praise, the Lord. praise God. Praise God. Just bask in the love of God. Enjoy it. And just as we were saying how it is to, you know, in the world that uh, uh, Roberta was talking about how we can influence people. Well, if you're miserable, fearful, paranoid, anxious, how many of you know that's probably not a great testimony? It's not going to win a lot of people to Jesus if we're freaked out and unsure of our own relationship with God? But how about if we are so secure in the Lord that it's joy unspeakable yes. and full of glory? People are drawn to that. Yeah. Amen. And it has an influence on them. Praise the Lord. The same as our nasty attitudes can have. Yeah. Right? The same as our judgmental, critical, hyper- uh, you know, intense kind of spiritual demands can cause people to freak out. Praise the Lord. Look, I'm not talking about softening up the message. I'm not talking about telling a lie. I'm not talking about trying to make it better than it is. You, can't, you couldn't if you tried. You couldn't make it better than it is. We just need to tell it like it is yes. so that people can come to God to the God that we have grown to know and to love as our Savior, our King, amen, our Lord, and our God. Hallelujah. He doesn't want us fearful. He doesn't want to be that strict step-parent that's smacking you around all the time, threatening you, judging you, criti critiquing you. He wants to be that loving Father that says, whatever I got you, praise the Lord. You don't have to sneak up to the refrigerator and try to get a little drink of milk or soda. Door's wide open. Anything in there's yours. You have an inheritance. Yes. Everything that he
he has, he has inherited or given to you, has made you a recipient of it. Praise the Lord. Yes. He is a good God. He is the only God. Yes. And that makes him good just by itself. Praise the Lord. Yes. Live with hope. Hope. Great expectation of good is what God wants you to believe. That's faith. That's simple faith to believe that God's going to do me right, that God's going to do me good. Hallelujah. That God calls faith. Praise the Lord, and he will reward it. He always does. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord one more hand clap. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Have a great rest of the week. Rest in him. Enjoy his favor. Share it with others. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.